So why is Tolkien the greatest writer of the 20th century, Wow, in your opinion? Well, I would give him that accolade, at least in fiction. About that. At least in uh, fiction. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, we, we, have, sure. we have a lot of others to contend for the title there. So, um, But in, in fiction, what, what Tolkien has done, and people, his contemporaries, and even still today, uh, will, will balk uh, at the, the title, the accolade we've just bestowed on him. Uh, mostly out of the accusation that, well, look, he's, he's just, he's done this mythology and that's really impressive. But, you know, we have mythologies and he's writing in English and can you really do any great work in English just as a language group? Uh, so this is a kind of regular critique of his. And really, is there anything original? Because, look, he's drawing on some of the Nordic myths, he's drawing on a lot of these earlier Greeks, you know, etc. The when folks try, I would say, to put forward the notion that he is worthy of such an accolade, greatest, greatest fiction writer, 20th century, they usually reference his languages. And as a philologist, it's an incredible accomplishment to have invented out of your mind, you know, a series of, of uh, coherent linguistic structures with which you can actually have conversations, something I have not developed myself. Maybe our kids, huh? <laughs> be able to reference God things in Cinderin, you know. Um, but it's, uh, to my mind, it's it's his work. <coughs> his genius is in the distilling portion. I mean, he he takes really the 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 interpretive key for Tolkien is his essay on fairy stories. His essay on fairy stories is really his whole program, his whole project, kind of in a nutshell. And the fact that he's able to draw on really the, the kind of the Western canon and then deliver this coherent you know, narrative for one, which you know, he sets out. It's, it's like a 